morning guys, it's Adam from BB Barbecue and Pits. On this week's video, I'm gonna show you how to run an efficient fire in your backyard smoker. If you've tuned into my videos and you've seen my restoration video, this is actually the same exact smoker. This is my um, Old Country Barbecue Pits Pecos, and I'm gonna show you guys how I like to run a fire in it. Go over a few things you're gonna to need to start out. Um, you're gonna need a charcoal chimney. This is a Weber charcoal chimney. It's pretty large. Uh, you're gonna need some charcoal. I use cheapo charcoal just because uh, we're just using it to start a coal bed. So don't use any of your expensive stuff. And then a welding glove, just so when you're messing around with the fire, uh, you don't burn your hand or anything. And then I've got one of these. This is a uh, Weber charcoal rake. This thing has come in handy a whole lot using an offset smoker uh, for rearranging the coal bed to rearranging logs. So this is a uh, must have in my eyes. And then you're gonna need some tumbleweeds, fire starters. I just got these off of Amazon, drop them all over the ground, whatever. And then a lighter. So that's what you need to start out. All right, step one, we're just gonna fill your chimney up with charcoal. So I like to do a heaping uh, amount of charcoal, just fill it all the way up. Uh, the more, the better. So now we're gonna light this thing. All right guys, so this is the inside of the firebox. I've got two uh, tumbleweed starters. We're gonna just put them right there in the middle. Now I've cleaned out the firebox because it's raining a little bit, so it's a little bit wet, so that shouldn't really matter. We're gonna light the tumbleweeds. Let those catch for a second. And then I like to put my charcoal chimney right on top. You kind of have to balance it inside because it's a round firebox. So it kind of leans on the handle here, but that's okay. As long as it stays upright, we're good to go. So we'll be back in about 20 minutes to check on this. You want it to be ashed over on the top and that's when you know you're ready to dump them in. Then another must have item is this bucket. Uh, I like to put this right at the opening of the firebox. It catches any kind of embers that are falling out so it'll uh, prevent any fires. <music> So our coals are uh, nice and hot. They're ready to be dumped in. But first we gotta go uh, grab some wood. So now we're gonna go to my wood shed. I've got a lot of wood to seasoning in there. I built this not too long ago. It's really good for getting some airflow to this wood. This is all red oak. So red oak I've just split. Got some dried red oak in the back here. And then some cherry. So, I'm going to grab a couple pieces of wood, and then we'll head back to the smoker. Alright, so for this next part, we're just going to dump these coals in. Uh, make sure you grab your welding glove. Grab this. And then set this off to the side. This is when I like to also take this rake, kind of even everything out, before I put the wood on. Get nice and even here. That looks pretty good to me. All right, so now that we've got that evened out, I like to take my biggest pieces of wood and kind of use those as anchor logs. So put those on the side. Now put this one on the side. And while we're doing this, we're gonna keep the door open. We're gonna keep the uh, cook chamber door open as well. So we want maximum airflow here. I'm gonna take two more logs and stack them just like that crosswise. So that's gonna ensure that we get maximum airflow right up under those logs so they'll light really quick. And then I'll show you a different angle from the, um, the firebox door. All right, so this is what we're looking like from the firebox door itself. You can see how I've got a gap there. Uh, it's gonna create a nice uh, vacuum for the airflow to go right up under those logs. And it's gonna help them light a lot faster. As you can see, this, this uh, wood is a little green. And by green, I mean it has a little bit of moisture in it. You can hear it. Uh, so, you know, you just have to deal with that sometimes. Uh, this is very important to uh, get the cold bed started really, really hot. So then if you put wood on there that's just a little bit green, 
it's not really going to make a difference. Uh, that's the that's the key to this whole process is just to create that really really hot coal bed. So then every time you add a log, it will catch instantly. So, but that's how I like to start it. So we're going to let all this burn down to a nice coal bed, and then uh, we'll be back to add a log and to uh, cook some good barbecue. All right, so it's been about 45 minutes or so, and uh, we've burned down two of those logs. So you can see I've kind of took my uh, charcoal rake and evened it out in the middle. So now we're ready to add another log. I'm going to add a log and then shut it down, and I'll show you how, uh, how I like to set my vents uh, to get up to temperature. So I've got another split of uh, red oak. I've got my welding glove. I'm just going to put it right down in there. With the welding glove, you can kind of put your hand in here and it won't really affect you, so that's kind of nice. You can touch the coals if you want to, just not for a long period of time. So what I'm going to let that do, I'm going to let that catch really quick, and then I'll shut the cowboy firebox, and we can start cracking the door and uh, shut the cook chamber to get up the temperature. All right, now that that's caught, we're just going to shut this cowboy firebox, and then I like to come back here, and then shut this door down. You can either leave it cracked, kind of like that, or you can just shut it and uh, leave the vents open. So kind of crack it like that. And then we'll see where that gets us temperature-wise. Um, we're gonna go ahead and shut the cook chamber door as well. So I've already sprayed the inside with Pam. Uh, that's another good thing to do to keep it all seasoned. So one more trick, you're just going to put your next couple of logs on top of the firebox and that's just going to heat those up and get them to where they'll catch a lot easier. Uh, especially if they're a little green, it'll work some of that moisture out. Uh, it'll preheat that log and you'll find that it'll catch 10 times easier. So I always like to do that. I'll add a split about every 20 to 25 minutes. But that's about it. And then you get some uh, nice clean smoke. But not too hard guys um, just play with it play with the airflow uh, if you struggle with your fire going out I always like to just crack the door and uh, blow a little air in there and uh, get it back started to where uh, the logs lit all right guys that's all I've got for you this week if you have any questions about fire management or what I like to do with the firebox and when I'm cooking just comment down below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I've got a lot more content coming with all, anything from offset to pellet smokers to the Weber kettle. You just let me know down in the comments if you want me to do a video on any topic that you're interested in. So I'm going to get to cooking on this thing. Until next time, guys, see you down the road.